Hello and welcome to the John Crest Show. I'm Glenn Seal, your host, joined as always by the coach of the Cougars. A big week for the College of Charleston as they play three home games, two of those conference games, and you start out the week with a, with a tough Stetson team. You know, basketball life, uh, Glenn, is a real struggle these days. We have tremendous ups and downs, uh, highs and lows. And uh, shooting-wise, you know, we can't hit the side of the barn sometimes without jumpers or our freebies from the foul line. But defense is there on most occasions, as we are the 12th team nationally rated with great defensive intensity. And somehow this week, with great teams like Stetson and Charleston Southern and Campbell, we're able to somehow have more points at the end of the game than all three teams. And I think the fans are going to see some great highlights of some great basketball at our arena this particular week. It seems like every game this season has been close. And the Cougars take on a Stetson team on Monday night that came into the John Crest Arena 6-4 and four on the year. We'll take a look at highlights from the arena as the Stetson Hatters come to town. As the Cougars have lost the game on Saturday night, and you try to start another home winning streak. And here we go with... Uh Stetson on offense, there's Jason Alexander looking into Chad Lambert, the rookie, the freshman, shoots a nice jump hook over Thad Delaney's outstretched hands. Lambert had six points early for the Hatters as they jumped out to a 6-2 to two lead. Ace Busby gets the shot. Stylish fadeaway jump shot by Marion Busby. Nice pass by Marcus Woods. Win tight and we, we come up with a miss, but somehow we come up with the, the errant uh, rebound and Ken Ward hits a nice turnaround jump shot in that paint. Ken Ward with a nice touch on the fall away. Oops. We lost at that time, and this is Jason Alexander, the great transfer from Rhode Island, hitting nothing but twine from three-point land, a great little guard. Alexander came into the game averaging 20 points, but he was held to nine in the game. You do a good job offensively rebounding, and you get the second opportunity yes, for Stacey Harris. He did not hesitate right down the middle, as Dan Hipshire, the coach who was at Dayton University and now coaches the Hatters. Marion Busby from NBA land, way out there. How long Three is points. that? We'll take it. <laughs> Stetson working it around, and there's the man, Aaron Walhoff. He had three three-pointers in the first half, and you really had to shut him down in that second half. Yes, they had five and a six. Here's Pat King on a miss. And Rodney Kahn on a great slam dunk on the missed shot. Great rebound by Rod. He's really up there in the air. Stetson led most of the first half. That had cut it to four points. And then you get the uh, steal, look and... At, look at the little guy. We're going to get it on a different camera from low. Look at him. Look at him, hang on the rim, get the fans in the game, enjoy himself, and get everybody really involved. He's a great little guard, and he can jump sky high. The dunk cut it to two points as Stetson led 34-32, and then uh, you get the three-pointer from Busby, and you take the lead, 35-34, nearing the end of the first half, and then you go into the locker room down by one. That second half action, look at Marcus Woods. Never say never. He's going to come up with it finally. He gets it out to Marion Busby eventually on the swing of the ball and nothing but net. That's Good a, shot from Marion Busby. That three-pointer tied it up at 40 with about 18 minutes left to go in the game. And there's Jason Alexander driving, slashing, and getting the little jumper to tie it up at 44. And here comes a big block. Rodney Kana from behind. Pat King on the rebound. They're playing some defense again. Jason Alexander gets it swiped. Anthony Johnson three on one. Stacey Harris in the middle. Hits Buzz on the wing. Good fast break transition basket. We played a great game in the second half, outscoring them 36 21. Here's Rodney Connor from the foul line. Great first step. He really eludes defenders and he hangs so high. Our fans are getting into the game also. Marion Busby. Oh, did he ever get fouled? No harm, no foul, I guess, Mr. Referee. Here's Dad Delaney. Oh, what a great stuff. Jason Alexander goes flying. It's like a, a, a battle of, of, of knockouts. Marcus Woods. Good pass from Marion Busby on the steal basketball. Put you up 11 points with a little over three minutes left. You're able to hold them off near the end of the game, and oh, there's a big dunk. That's a beauty. Mark Himes uh, to Thad Delaney. That's Kerry Blackshear. I think he might go in the pros, that guard. He's that good, and it was a great win for us after that tough defeat against Mercer on Saturday. That was a huge win for the Cougars. They went at 73-59, and uh, it was a big one because of the loss, and I think you needed to come back, have a victory in conference play, and kind of get things back uh, on the right track, I guess you could say. Yes, and in the second half, we shot the ball 53% from the floor. We played outstanding defense, and Stetson's a real good team. Last year, they lost by one point on ESPN to Central Florida, or they would have gone to the NCAA tournament. So we have to go back to Florida eventually to play Stetson again. But this league, the tack is much improved. I saw fans saw some great teams coming this week, starting with Mercer on Saturday and then Stetson on Monday. The College of Charleston moved to 8-5 and 2-1 and and with the victory over Stetson. And then the big one was coming up Thursday night. Charleston Southern comes to the John Crest Arena. We'll take a look at highlights from the Charleston Southern game when the John Crest Show continues after this.
Come see the winning lineup of cars, trucks, and vans here at Stokes Mazda Volkswagen on Ashley Phosphate Road. The Stokes Mazda Volkswagen team can help put you in a new car, truck, or van, along with payments you can afford and quality service by factory trained technicians after the sale. Take it from me, Coach John Kress. I'm a real fan of Stokes Mazda Volkswagen here on Ashley Phosphate Road. Okay, guys, here's the game plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome back to the John Crest Show. The Cougars on Thursday night took on Charleston Southern, a team they had beaten earlier in the year at the North Charleston Coliseum. It's a team you'd beaten 11 straight times, and I think you had Gary Edwards' number. It was wild. You know, uh, Charleston Southern had won three games in a row coming in. They'd beaten the Citadel Bulldogs twice. And somehow, I think we might have a whammy or a jinx on those guys because in six out of the last 11 games, we have trailed down the stretch. And somehow we find a way, we find an answer, but it was a sellout crowd, it was on TV and radio, and the people really got into this one like maybe never before. One of the outstanding battles, and it didn't go 40 minutes, it didn't go 45 minutes, it went 50 full minutes of excitement and sheer atmosphere. It, it was definitely exciting. Let's go over to the John Crest Arena where the Cougars hosted Charleston Southern and a big game. The Cougars now had beaten Charleston Southern 70 to 64 earlier in the year. Gary yeah, Edwards was having some fun. Oh, we leave, leave Chad Koch alone all underneath, and uh, he's by him alone, somebody dunks it. Gary Edwards likes that. Man. They drop off. I mean, they played fallback defense, and Anthony Johnson burns them for a good three point shot from the left corner. They're looking in. We're playing aggressive defense. Marion Busby on the steal. He gives it to his high school buddy from Eau Claire. That Delaney slams it. What a great dunk or fast break basketball by the Kooks. The Buccaneers had led it early and that had cut it to two and it was pretty tight in the first half. That Delaney, oh, a nice tip by Chad Koch. Now the miss by Winston Gordon. Good play by Charleston Sutton. They're a very good rebounding team. Busby misses and we're going to be on defense. Can't leave Brett Larrick alone. Give him any daylight, he buries three point shots. Brett Larrick put him up by jumper. four then, and he's a great shooter from yeah, the outside. Is. Marcus Woods, good pass down the court to Thad Delaney. He does nothing but dunk those balls <laughs> on fast breaks. And I think the fans like to see Thad Delaney dunk the basketball as well. Look at this play by Eric Brooks. It's a, you know, a tough shot, fading away. The clock was running down. It was kind of a super shot and an unbelievable way to finish the first half. Burks put the Buccaneers up by three, 26-23 uh, at the half, and the Cougars come out trying to get things going in the second half, That's and Thad Delaney with the it. follow. Oh, blue-collar basketball to get that basket inside after all those misses. They drop by, and Marcus Woods hits one of his few jumpers from the outside. He liked it. Here's Stacey Harris to Marion Busby. We're on the run to Thad Delaney. Ooh, he has it. No, the referee calls offensive foul, and it's going the other way. No hoop. Oh, I don't like that. We really needed that basket. Here we are on offense, half-court set, hiking on top. Over to Thad Delaney, he's inside, big basket, nice feed for Marcus Woods from that left wing. They really collapsed in on Thad Delaney uh, there in the second half of the ball game and in the first half. Delaney misses a free throw here. The Cougars had some problems shooting free throws. They missed seven straight at one time in the second half. It's disastrous, but Stacy finally you know, loosens up from outside and hits a big three as we're trying to mount a comeback. Here he misses one, but we're going to keep it alive. Pat King on a great tip with his left hand. Final instructions, Eric Burke. They're up two points. Marks with a great steal. What emotion he shows, as we still have a chance. We've got a chance to win this as we're down two points with something like 11 seconds on the clock. We've got to regroup and try to get the ball inside. Stacy Harris into Thad Delaney. Couple of seconds on the clock, he banks one in off the glass. We tie the score in regulation, 48-48. Let's play five minutes more and throw it up. 3,561 got to see this game go into overtime, and Stacy Harris, outstanding pass to Thad Delaney inside. Great curl cut and great feed as Marcus Wood starting in front of Eric Burks. Buzz comes up with the loose ball. He's going to hit ahead. He's got his partner inside. Ooh, they almost took Thad's head off. Cameras fly, and Thad goes to the foul line and makes that one. And that puts you up by 5, 57-52. And Marion Busby works his magic on the baseline. Oh, what a great shot. Seven point lead. It looked like we were going to win it in the first OT. But Gary Edwards does a great job. They find Brett Larrick. He hits one of those two three point shots from long distance. And this is a tight game. And it is a two point game at this point when Pat King misses the free throw. Thad Delaney called for the foul. 
And then Winston Gordon goes to the line, makes two free throws, and ties it up at 61. What a great comeback. Here's the uh, second OT. We start off, watch this. Busby's going to lead off with a three-point shot from the left wing. But Greg Larrick's going to say, hey, Buzz, if you can hit one, I'm going to take one on you. Pop. It goes. But Buzz comes down the other way and says, Brett, OK, I'm going to go two against one here as he hits the long distance three. Shots had not been going for us. All of a sudden, we loosen up and make big baskets, especially in that second OT, as we score a ton of points. Works on a drive, gets fouled. Marcus Woods' back is hurting. He's ailing. He's out for the game. It's Marty Travis and Kevin Sile take it to the sideline. Pat King on isolation. Great explosive drive. Finishes it, and we kind of never look back in this second OT as our fans love this action. Good inside out basketball, never touches the deck. Stacey Harris, lob pass to Thad Delaney. We are scoring now on a regular basis in our offensive sets. That puts you up by seven points there in the second overtime as uh, Eric Burks cut it to six points, but wasn't quite enough as the Cougars able to get one last finishing touch on this Charleston Southern game. Great slam dunk, and Stacey's enjoying it. The masked marvel here, the Crest Boys leaving that arena very, very happy after that victory. I, I think Ryan and John enjoyed that game more than anybody of the 3,500 that were there. But a big win for your program, 81-73. And this is a Charleston Southern team that has played well on the road this year. They come in here, and I don't know what it is. It just seems like they can't seem to get over that hump against you guys. Uh, they're a great ball club. You know, that they're now 3-0. and They won last night against Maryland Baltimore at home. They've got three players who can play with any uh, team in the country. And they are Brett Larrick. Tia Latson and Eric Burks. They're fabulous players, a great coach in Gary Edwards. They're going to go really a long way, I think, in the Big South this year. But we've had two tremendous wins against them, and we have to wait till next year again to play the Bucks. Well, the Cougars didn't have much time to rest before Saturday night's game. After the double overtime game against Charleston Southern, they go back to the arena to take on Campbell. That was last night. And uh, I'm going to try to pick up another conference victory. We'll take a look at those highlights when we return on The John Crest Show. Broadcasting one billion miles into the universe, the new sports voice of the low country, WQSC, AM 1340 is on the air. Real sports fans know the difference. WQSC is all sports, all the time, and has the low country listening to Craig Schumer, voice of the Citadel Bulldogs, Dave Dallas, voice of the South Carolina Stingrays, and Glenn Searle, voice of the College of Charleston Cougars. Come join the club, the sports club, WQSC, AM 1340. The 6th Annual Warehouse Clearance Sale is going on right now at National Discount Computers with discounts up to 70%. That's right, we're bursting at the seams, and that means savings for you. And 90 days, same as cash. That's right, 90 days, same as cash. Up to 70% off, so come early for best selection. Everything in our store must be sold. We'd rather sell it than count it. Hurry to the Warehouse Clearance Sale going on now at National Discount Computers. South Windermere Center behind Belk. College of Charleston Cougars go back to the John Cress Arena last night to take on a Campbell team that I guess, Coach, you're pretty familiar with. You played them two weeks ago up in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina at the small Carter Gym. Their home uh, gym seats only about 800 people, but you've got a big victory against them the first time. You know, and I, as a coach, knew they were a darn good ball club. They had beaten Richmond on the road. They had beaten East Carolina, Glenn. And it's my job as a coach to get the message to our players that it was not going to be an easy task. It was a 72-48 victory a couple of uh, you know, weeks back. And uh, we, I don't think, had the defensive intensity. And of course, we couldn't score for about six or seven minutes. But I was very disappointed in how we played in the first half. Campbell is coached by Billy Lee. They've got some good players. And uh, we somehow got our act together. But it took a long while. We played about 10 or 12 minutes of great basketball. But the other 28 to 30 was so somewhat sorry as far as I was concerned. Well, you were up late on Thursday night with that Charleston Southern game. And the Cougars might have been a little bit tired at the beginning of the Campbell game. We'll take a look at the highlights as the Campbell Fighting Camels come to the John Cress Arena. I like that nickname, Fighting Camels, as uh, the Cougars trying to win their third straight game at home. And it's a tough Campbell team as Scott Gurley, the guard, gets the running jumper inside the lane. We're uh, looking for some offensive basketball as they're really packing in the defenses. Bad to lean in the miss, but Stacey Harris way over above the rim for a great tip on the run. There's Billy Lee, the adapter coach. 
It was a pretty slow start for the Cougars, but uh, Campbell does a good job shooting from the outside. Dennis Hurst with a big three-pointer. He's the leading scorer. He's a 6-7-4. He really go inside-outside. Here's Matt Ryan Busby spotting up. Nice feed from Rodney Connor. Inside-out basketball always works for our particular team. Good curl. Here's Dennis Hurst stepping back. Rodney Connor split second late, and Dennis Hurst burns us from the outside. We've got to get out on three-point shooters. We're looking inside, we're going to swing it. Rodney Connor uses a right hand. The lefty really is uh, ambidextrous and really can go on the drive with both hands. Dennis Hurst, okay, inside. Oh, that's Freddie. Okay, Freddie Butler, who wow. is the, uh, he hit, that was the first game he had played this year because he was academically ineligible for the first semester. Ken Ward, a strong rebound, a great outlet pass to Marcus Woods. This is going to end the first half. We're down five. We cut it to three points on Pat King's slam dunk. It was a great basket in the first half. 22-19 at the break. Not much scoring in the first half, but you played great defense against this Campbell yes. team, and then with the big basket inside. Marcus Woods, nice bounce pass to Fagel Lane. Good baseline play. They're trying to isolate Marcus Woods, but look at Marcus Woods. Those hands, the quickest in the southeast as he goes on the break. And he feeds Pat King. They step in late. It's a three-point play, and it's a great basket to put us on. Cougars take the lead of the second half and then you just try to keep running and here's Marion Busby, unbelievable. He was almost out of bounds and he kept his feet in bounds and somehow he got a three point shot and he got the fans in the game as he gives them their famous, his famous pistol sign. Good steal by Thad Delaney. Look at how agile the big guy he is as he walks us in for a basket on the fast break. That puts you up by seven points with about 15 minutes left to go in the game. As you, went on a, you went on a 22 to six run the first 10 minutes of the second half. A great play by A.J. Johnson, a great steal, and Anthony really goes to the length of the court well. He's playing great defense for us. He's our third guard coming in. Here he penetrates, finds Thad Delaney. Foul and basket. Ooh, he goes down hard. Kind of a Chris Webber move around the hoop. Thad Delaney had a very, very good game as we got him the ball inside more in the second half. Another steal by Pat King. He's going to slam dunk it with his left hand. What a play. <laughs> kind of like Scotty Pippen does for those Bulls on the run. That Team defense. Look at Ken Ward. He played a great second half with his block shots and his rebounds. Pat King, another slam dunk. And that puts you up by 13 points there with 10 minutes left to go in the game. But Campbell fights back. They need the ball. Dennis Hurst goes without it. Nice bounce pass. And now it's a five-point game. We need a key bucket. We're going to go to Mary. He's going to drive the right baseline. He's going to pull up. Soft shot. That kind of puts some distance in this particular game as we win it by four. We had to make some key foul shots, Glenn. At the end, they finally went in. Marion went for a pair and made his. And then Pat King iced the game with his two down the stretch. It was a great second half for us after a very, very slow start in that first half basketball. 53-49 was the final score as the Cougars win their 10th game of the season. You moved to 10-5, and five, but I think more importantly, you moved to 3-1 and one in conference play. Right, it was a good week. Uh, Monday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, you know, a, a victory uh, a sweep, and uh, the fans came out. We kind of sold every ticket we had on all three nights, and that's important for Cougar basketball. The fans are loving it. There's a lot of atmosphere. The cheerleaders, the T-shirts that go flying into the stands. It's, it's all really, you know, college basketball is at its best in, in Charleston. I really like what, what's happening. And I know with all the rain that we've had, it was good to see the fans come out last night. 3,000 at the John Crest Arena for last night's game against Campbell. Well, stick around. We've got a lot coming up for you. We've got a little feature on the preparation that this guy goes through before basketball games. More coming on the John Crest Show. The College of Charleston men's basketball team finished 24-4 and a year ago and made it to the NCAA tournament. Described as unbelievable to many, but actually impossible without the help of dedicated Cougar Club members. The College of Charleston Cougar Club invites you to help support the school's 17 NCAA Division I sports. The College of Charleston Cougar Club, achieving new levels of excellence. Don't be afraid of the wildlife. Join the Cougar Club today. Here's to the workers bringing down the trees. Here's to the sawmen who cut it to a tee. Here's to the craftsmen who turn and work the wood. Here's to the builders who make our lives so good. We're Southern Lumber and New Work. Your natural choice for quality.
And I'm sure preparation is probably one of the, uh, the biggest things that is a part of John Cress's life as a college basketball coach. And I just want to ask you, what is it like on day game, or the day of games, before the game, you've got to be a little bit nervous going into the locker room. Oh, without a doubt. And then it's a matter of uh, organization. It's uh, reviewing the game plan. As teachers, we must show players what to do. We must uh, tell them how to do it. And then we must uh, you know, make sure they do it. So there's a lot involved. I get great input from my assistant coaches, Greg Marshall, Dwayne Grace, and Jim Yarbrough. We have edited tapes. We have scouting reports. It's kind of a science in its own way. In the last couple of minutes, it's just getting the players to uh, review the strategy and go out on the court and get it done. And get it done. Ten wins this season for the Cougars. They're ten and five now. And Dean Stevens got to follow the coach of the Cougars around before Charleston Southern's game. Five things are involved with what we have to do today. Communication amongst the players. You getting together with huddles so we know what's happening. Concentrate on each and every play. We play with tremendous smarts. We've got all this poise. All these games we play together. Let's use them with the third thing, which is smarts. Bounding is always important. It should be an edge if we really want to go and get bounds on both ends of the court and, and use the glass well. Loose balls. The first couple, let's fly for loose balls. Don't watch. When it's on the floor, let's go after it with reckless abandon. That's when we come up with the loose balls. That's when we make things happen. If you got pressure on the ball against Charleston Southern and they pull up their dribble, then you can get it past the lanes and they are very prone to turnovers. <laughs> there for each other on every play. If we can get those guys into foul trouble, they'll have a tough time playing against us with their bench. But let's see what happens. Let's let it all hang out, okay gang? And the Cougars did let it all hang out on Thursday night, a big win against Charleston Southern. It's kind of nice to be able to go into the locker room and just see what goes on in there. Yes, you know, coaches really need to put their uh, players and their teams in a position to win. But then talent is really going to come to the front and decide games. But I'm amazed at Dean Stevens, how entertaining a piece he can put together to go into the living rooms on, on Sundays. He does a great job, and I'm just great to, uh, real glad to be part of, of, of what he does with basketball and sports in town, what you do, Glenn Seal. Well, thank you very much, Coach. <laughs> the Cougars are going to be out of town for a while. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back from this time out on the John Crest Show. It's been nice having the College of Charleston at home for a while. Four straight home games, uh, including uh, Saturday's game against Mercer, then Stetson, Charleston Southern, and Campbell. But now the Cougars go back on the road. They were on the road nine out of their first 11 games, and uh, it's maybe tough on the road in the Trans-America Athletic Conference. You know, without a doubt, we've got our bags packed. Uh, I've hired a shot doctor to make this trip uh, to Louisiana with us. And, uh, you know, last year we won our last 16 games of the season. Now we've won three, and we have 13 left. Maybe that's coincidental. Can we win 13 in a row? I don't know. I just hope each and every game we play our hearts out and we really you know, go after it. And uh, it, it can be done, but it's a game-by-game -game basis. I think it starts on Thursday, Glenn. It does start on Thursday. The Cougars travel to Shreveport, Louisiana to take on Centenary. And this is a good Centenary basketball team. Yes, they're big and strong, and they're going to give us a, a tremendous battle, I think, in Louisiana. So you'll leave on Wednesday, go to Shreveport on uh, Thursday night, and then you travel to, I guess we'll go to New Orleans and then uh, travel over to Hammond, Louisiana, as uh, Southeast Louisiana is the team you'll play on Saturday. 
Yes, and they're, they're going to be great road games, and I, I hope we can play both ends of the court. Consistency is, is going to be very important, but I think we're getting healthy, and the team, after these three wins, hopefully we'll have some confidence. We'll practice Monday, Tuesday, make that trip on Wednesday, and the games will be aired by you on radio or Thursday and Saturday. I hope the people tune in, because thank you for their presence in these games at home. It's been just a wonderful atmosphere at our arena. It'll be a couple of weeks before our next show, as the uh, Cougars and myself will be in Louisiana next weekend. So uh, we'll be back in two weeks with more of the John Crest Show.